Today, I'm going to start my journey of Tyranids in 8th edition. Tyranids nom nom. Let's do this! Nick speaking, and welcome to this video. Right, today we have a Tyranid video for you. The first in a brand new series to the channel documenting my journey of Tyranids in 8th edition. Now I started playing Tyranids in 4th edition after I purchased a big box of unassembled Tyranids from a friend of mine. I got them all assembled and painted and now I own around 7,000 points worth of Tyranids and I have to say I've had lots of fun on the table playing the bugs. So now it's time to get them out on the table for 8th edition. Now it's fair to say that 8th edition is very different from everything else that we've known in the past, especially with the new beta rules. So before we get talking about my journey, if you would like to keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40k, not miss a Tyranid upload, then please subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss a video. Okay, so here we go. The Tyranids Codex. Now, I have to say that this Codex uh, isn't as well laid out as my Necron one. I know obviously the Necron one is a little bit newer than this, but it's quite amazing the difference in layout. The Necron one is a lot easier to navigate than this one. It almost feels like an old 7th edition Codex in its format. However, I did get used to it after having a good flick backwards and forwards, and I've been working out how I'm going to come up with a list for 8th edition. Now in 7th edition I was basically playing with two different lists. I had a Nidzilla, basically built around as many big monstrous creatures as I could get on the table with a couple of ripper swarms for troops and that was a lot of fun to play. Not the most competitive list, but certainly a lot of fun. And then I had a bit more of a competitive list, my lock list as I used to call it. So I used to have a couple of winged hive tyrants, I had a Turvigon with some Termagants, they used to hide behind a defence line with Venomthropes, giving them a great cover save. And then the Morlocks used to come in and do the business. Morlocks were quite nasty back then, and they were backed up with a harpy and some drop pods with some termagants in. I did very well with that particular army and again it was a lot of fun. Tyranids are always a lot of fun to play. So I had to work out could I adapt those lists for 8th edition. Now I've previously made a video about the Morlock. I'll link you up to that video there where we discussed how basically a Morlock is now a lot cheaper in points but nowhere near as good as they used to be. Now in that video I explained about how the Morlock is my most favourite model from the Tyranid collection and that is why I built a list around it. I was also discussing the fact that maybe I could have even more Morlocks in that list down to the fact that the points seem to be a lot cheaper in the new Tyranid Codex than they were before. However, we now have the new beta rules and that means you can only have three units of the same type. So only three more locks for me. So that was my starting point. Now, like I said, I'm planning to document my journey regarding Tyranids in 8th edition. So that is what I'm gonna do. So my starting point is three more locks. From there, I thought it would be a good idea to have a look at the adaptations for Tyranids maybe to work out which hive fleet I want to go for. Now actually, I do have my own Tyranid hive fleet. It's called the Stinger hive fleet, and I've painted them in my own colors, which is black and yellow. So I can actually choose any adaptation that I wish and just adapt them for my army. So I had a look at the adaptations in the codex, and I have to say, none of them really seem to match the Morlock very well. So I quickly disregarded that and thought, well, how about I make the list first and then look for the adaptation which matches the list the most. So that's what I did. I started list building. Now I thought the best thing to do was start with some of the base units that I had from my old list. Two Flyrants seem to be very prominent for 8th edition, very good unit still. So I thought I would stick with two Flyrants in the list. Now previously I had the Turvigon with the Turvigon tax and the defence line. 
Now things are different in 8th edition with how terrain works and I don't think really that blob on the table is going to work very well. However, I did feel like I needed a good amount of troops. So I maxed out the troop slots to six. I had some gene stealers in there, some warriors and some gans. I then looked at the list and what it was lacking and I thought it was lacking some shooting. So I remembered a video that Aceface did on Biofors. That's the video just there. Check it out if you haven't seen this already. Aceface is a great Tyranid player. And I remember his video saying how Biofors are actually really good in 8th edition. So I thought, hey, maybe I could get some Biofors in my list. I then realized that I had my three heavy supports already filled out. So for some reason, I totally forgot about how we list build now in 8th edition. I think I must have had 7th edition on my mind. So what I decided to do was scrap my list and maybe start again by picking which FOC, which detachment I was going to use to build my list. Now I had to think about it and I thought the best thing to do is stick to one detachment and also to have one adaptation just to make it easier for when I'm playing the army at first just to get used to the army. So I decided that the battalion detachment was the way to go. It was a nice simple detachment. It wasn't too far off the detachment that I was using previously. However, it would mean that I was limited to those three heavy support slots with the Morlocks. So now I knew I was gonna have a single battalion detachment and I knew I was going to have a single adaptation. Although at this moment in time, I didn't know which one it would be. I then had a quick look at the artifacts to see if maybe they could change my mind, give me a direction to go. I have to be honest, I wasn't that impressed with the artifacts, at least not with the list that I was trying to build. So it was back to square one with three Morlocks, but I had a bit more of a direction now. Okay, so for my Morlocks, I'm going to give them Toxin Sacks. It's only one point. It makes a Morlock 105 points in total. So three Morlocks, just 315 points. And in this list, which is going to be a 2,000 point list, that's pretty much nothing. Uh, so even if they don't do a great deal on the table, they're still very usable for the points value that they are. They're going to make a great distraction unit. And that's how I'm seeing Morlocks now. So if they're going to distract, then I need other stuff on the table. So once again, it was back to the fly rents, uh, two fly rents in actual fact. Uh, and I'm going to go for sort of a dual purpose fly rent. So some that can shoot and also assault. So both fly rents are going to have a pair of monstrous uh, talons and also two maggot death spitters. So they can come down, they've got a reasonable amount of shots and they could handle themselves in close combat if needed. Now of course they can take psychic powers, however at this stage I hadn't even looked at the psychic powers, so I was gonna do that after the list was built and allocate the appropriate powers that I think the list needed. So my two HQs came in at 398 points, so again, not that expensive for what the HQs can do. So that gave me three more locks and two fly runs, which of course are all gonna be held in reserve to come on turn two. Of course, they've got to come on turn two now if you want to deploy them outside of your deployment zone. So that means I now need some bodies on the table to cope with having all of those units in reserve. So once again, I started to look at troops. Now before 8th edition came along, we had a special rule called instant death. So if you were hit with a weapon that was double your toughness and you failed your save, you died instantly regardless of how many wounds you had. Now this was a problem for the Tyranid Warrior. However, we don't have that rule now in 8th edition. So I think the Tyranid Warrior is probably a lot better than it was. So I thought about having two units of Tyranid Warriors on the table for synapse and for survivability. Now in the old days, I used to have units of three warriors because you could only have one big gun for each unit you have. But in 8th edition, you can have one big gun for every three models in the unit. So now we can have two big guns in a unit of six. So that is the direction that I've gone. So my first troop choices are going to be two units of six warriors. I'm going to have four death spitters and two venom cannons 
in each. Venom cannons within the warrior units seem to be a very good choice of gun. And obviously being a synapse creature, it meant that I had some synapse on the table as well as some multi-wounded models. So next I had a look at more troops choices and then I came to gene stealers. Now before you ask, I'm not going to do gene stealer cults. I'm going to stick with just the Tyranid Codex. I'm quite happy with that. And gene stealers seem to be quite good in the new codex and I'm looking forward to using them again. I used to use them a lot and they used to be quite scary. They seem to have some bonuses now where you can advance and assault and they have better save. So I'm looking forward to getting these out on the table. Now I got a bit inspired by a video I saw by Wargamer Fritz. He was talking about his Tyranid army and how he was using gene stealers as a flanking unit. Several gene stealer units blobbed together working as a big unit and he would put them to the side of his army and push them forward. If your enemy ignored them, well they could get in and cause quite a bit of damage. If your enemy targeted them, that would take the heat off of the rest of your army. Now, I'm not necessarily going to be using my gene stealers in that way but it did inspire me to take a reasonable amount of gene stealers. So I've gone for 40 gene stealers in total. I am an art about taking 4 units of 10 or 2 units of 20. Now of course a unit of 20 gives me the advantage of being over a unit of 10 and having that one extra attack. So I think 2 units of 20 is the way to go just because I get the extra bonus and I've got less drops and less kill points on the table. Okay so that's my troops, my HQs and my maxed out heavy support. That means I'm now looking at elites and fast attack. Now the blobs which I'm putting down on the table whilst I'm waiting for my Morlocks and my Flyrants to come in still seem a little bit vulnerable to me. So I thought I might need a little bit of defence. So I went to the Venomthropes. Now I was very pleased to see that the new Venomthropes special rule puts your enemy at minus one ballistic skill when shooting at models within six inches of the Venomthropes. However, I also noticed that Venom Throats are now in units of 3 to 6, and I only have 2 models, where previously you could take them in units between 1 and 3. Now, like I said, I have over 7,000 points worth of Tyranid models, but of course I don't necessarily have the right models for 8th edition. So I am going to have to get myself another Venom Throats. Until then, though, I'm probably going to proxy a Ravenar as a Venom Throats. It will be fine, I'm only playing with buddies. So now I'm starting to add the points up of the list and they're starting to tot up quite a bit now. I haven't got too much left and I do want to get some shooting on the table and maybe a little bit more of a survivability on the table. Step in, the zone thropes. Now once again, the zone thropes unit has changed quite a bit in 8th edition. I've got just two zone thropes and then one zone throat which is converted into the Doom and Melanti model, which I now generally use as a neurothropes. However, three zone throats is all I have. So next, I'm going to need a screening unit. Eighth edition is all about screening our front lines, especially now we can get a potential turn one assault. So I'm going to have a big squad of gargoyles. I started off with 20, I've had to drop them down to 18, just the way the points worked out at the end of the list. So I can use them as a screen in front of my blob, or if I feel I'm not threatened from the first turn assault, I could maybe have them as a flanking unit to the side of the blob. So I think the gargoyles will be quite useful. Of course, they die quite quickly, but that's what they're there for. So that gives me about 150 points left. Now my original list had some drop pods or tyrannocytes in it and I liked using them because I've got my own converted drop pods where they didn't have that model previously in a codex. So I enjoy using them so I thought maybe I could get that into the list, possibly put the zone throats in there. But I was having a chat with Ace Face and we concluded that the tyrannocyte just probably isn't really worth it, especially in this list. I've got the Morlocks who can tunnel anyway if I want to do that. But the Zone Thropes have a longer range, 24 inch uh, on their psychic powers. So quite reasonable actually. So I think they can just stay on the table. And after all, I wanted more bodies on the table anyway. So I dropped the idea of the Tyrannocyte 
and instead I've added the Death Leaper. Now the Death Leaper is a single model coming in at about 90 points. It's a nice little distraction unit. It's always fun to play and I like the model. And that left me with a few more points and with Termagants being as cheap as they are, 40 points bought me a unit of Termagants. Just a small unit of Gants with a flesh borer just to sit on an objective. And then I was one point over so I dropped one of the toxin sacks on a Morlock to give me a 2,000 point list. So that was my list and my plan for it on the table. Two big squads of gene stealers, two squads of warriors, a squad of gargoyles, a squad of termagants, three zone thropes, and as many units of those being protected by the venom thropes. And then in reserve, three Morlocks, a Death Leaper, and two Flyrants. So that was how the list was going to work. Now I needed my adaptation. So I had a good look at the adaptations to find out which one I thought would be best suited to this list. Now the one which I thought was most suited was the one which is the hardest one to pronounce and that is the Jormanjanda which except for fly units gives you a cover save even if you're not in cover unless you advance or charge. Now I thought this was well suited to my turn one issue of not having too many units on the table. So with the Venom Thropes it's going to be hard to hit and also I'm going to get a cover save even if I'm not in cover, which could be quite useful depending on the cover on the board. So that was my high fleet sorted. I then needed an artifact. I went for the Norn Crown, that gives me a 30 inch bubble where I can ignore the effects of instinctive behavior. And then for my Warlord trait, I've chosen Instinctive Killer. That lets me choose a unit at the beginning of the game and then whenever I hit that unit, I can re-roll the hits. Pretty useful and the bonus to that is it doesn't just affect the unit but that unit's type. So if someone has three units of the same type on the table I can reroll my hits for all of those. And then finally was the Psychic Powers where I went for Catalyst and the Horror on one Tyrant and Catalyst and Paroism on the other Tyrant. And then for the Zone Thropes I've gone for Psychic Scream which I think is a good complementary power to Smite. And that is my list. Now I'm not saying this is the most competitive list, but I think it's a nice solid start for me to find my feet with Tyranids in 8th edition. Now I still have the stratagems to add to this list. I haven't quite worked out exactly which ones I'm going to be using. If you've got any suggestions, let me know in the comments box below. But the good thing about this list is it maintains my three Morlocks in the army. Now that may change as I develop the list but I think it's a good starting point and I'm really looking forward to getting these Tyranids on the table. Now if you want to see more on my list development see the battle reports with this list. If you enjoyed this video then please consider subscribing. Hit my icon at the end of the video so you can keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40k. Beam me up!